your best with your club. 232 to your best. 274 carry. It's crazy. I'm not supposed to see 40 yards. <laughs> We're not supposed to see 40 yards, but we hey. did. All right, guys, today is the day. It's an exciting day. And ever since you guys first heard wind of the new Titleist TSI drivers, you were dropping the comments. When's the video coming? Well, here, here it, it is, is. Mike. <laughs> yep. Here it is. And I'll tell you what, the Titleist TS2, which if you guys saw our fitting, I played the two, you played the three, mm -hmm. has been hands down the best performing driver I have ever hit. I love it. It's been in the bag for quite some time now. So what I'm going to say, Mike, is if this performs better, then Mm -hmm. but I, agree. I am all I in. Agree. We're also going to talk about some of the improvements. They've made some dramatic changes. And you oftentimes you just think the next iteration is just a few tweaks. No, no, no. Big changes. Big changes in the face that Titleist has never done before. Mm. So I can't wait to talk a little yes. bit about that. Also, they've worked with new aerodynamic scientists to make it even faster. Yeah, I, I mean, know. like, come on, faster? I know. How, right? I know. But it's saying it's even faster, the face performs better, so I'm super excited. We're gonna hop over here with our fitter, we're gonna run through the fitting process, and we're gonna see. And guess what? Stay tuned. Because of course, you know what we're doing, yeah, right? Yeah, you know. You know what's coming. We're giving one away, baby. So stay <laughs> tuned for later in the video. We're gonna tell you how to enter that you can win your choice of either of the two drivers that we're testing today. Let's go, you ready? I'm ready. I'm nervous I'm gonna lose the bumblebee, but hey, <laughs> if it makes me faster and longer, let's Whatever go. Whatever gets more yards, let's go. All right, guys, our fitter today, Andy Inman. Andy, thanks for having us. Uh, you know, I've had this Bumblebee now for a year, TS3. I call it the Bumblebee, obviously, because yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely love this club, but I'm hearing more speed in the TS. We're gaining. I'm excited. Yeah, we're gaining speed for a number of different ways. We're doing it with aerodynamics. We're doing it with new materials. Uh, it's exciting stuff. We've been fitting now for two weeks, and we've been really doing well. Every every single one we've seen some improvements on. That's great. For every golfer at every level. So, so before we talk about my swing, which you'll see after the first <laughs> ball that I hit, um, what's the process here? We're going to hit this for a little bit. You're yeah, going to baseline. I, I, I'm going to give you as many shots as you need so that you hit the ball. It's early in the morning, it's damp, it's wet, we're all a little, little, little cold, right? So we're gonna give you as many shots as you need until you see the one that is the representation that you know is the good shot for you. Yeah. We're gonna look at those numbers and we're gonna see where there's room for improvement. We're gonna start you off with a similar product. Mm -hmm. Since you're coming from a TS3, we may even bring your shaft into it yeah, so, we can take, <laughs> so we can take out the element of shaft. Got it. People say shaft is the engine of the club. Mm -hmm. I disagree. Hmm. Interesting. Shaft is the transmission. You're the fuel. Right. This is the engine. Okay. This is the chassis. Mm. This is everything. Uh, yep. You're the fuel source. I'm transmitting that fuel to to my engine, to my my sports car, my rocket ship, whatever you want to call it, right? So it's very important. Let's compare head to head sure. and see how dramatic the differences are that we've been seeing for the last couple weeks. That's excellent. Let's find out. Let's find out. And as far as the numbers go, is it just obvious that a three is going to go into a three? Or no. Okay. No, it isn't. The, the design features may tend on paper to lean us towards one to the other. Doesn't mean we always go there. So we don't play golf on paper. Yeah. We play golf on grass in, in the real world. So we let the fitting process, I, I don't, you know, Anything slant it any way it yep. goes. Let's find out what you like better. All right, let's so do it. So let's get you going. Let's hit, again, as many shots as you need to get a representative shot. I want you to turn back to me and say, that's the one. Okay. Let's measure that one. You got it. All right. All right, Andy, while he's warming up, yeah. one question that I would have is, yeah. we talked about his exotic shaft. So, yeah. I mean, you have access to a lot of things with your fitting. We, but <laughs> the, the TS uh, series yes, sir. had a number of great kind of standard shaft options. Yes. What are we looking at as far as that goes? Is it similar in it the mix similar. for this series? It is similar. We have kept the hazardous as one of our four featured shafts. We replaced the, ha the even flow white with a 10 side white. So now we've got Tensai White, Tensai Blue, mm -hmm. Kurakagi, and the last shaft is the Hazardous. Yeah. Now, at Titleist, we'll, anything we can get our hands on for you, we'll build it for you. Right. But those are the four we're featuring. That comes with the price of the club, so there's no, no upcharge. 
Let's just pick any, any, but that's sort of like the best one. We got a 106 speed. We got a, didn't pick a 111 speed. We got a 104 speed. We're talking club head speed right now. 108, 111. So we have a potential for a 111, 112 range. Mm -hmm. 108 to 112, we're in that range. We'll okay. call it 110 for average. Let's check out ball speeds now. That's the effective thing we got to start. Sure. When we're looking to improve anybody's game, getting them down the fairway a little further in play, we're looking at ball speed first, right? How can I maximize that? Where are we? We're at 150. We're at 152. We're at 156. We're at 153. We're at 147. Once we've maximized that, and I'll tell you, coming from a 111 club speed, 159 is not exactly ideal. It's low. Okay. And we can do we can do a little better than that. What would you like to see on a ball speed? The theoretical limit is going to be based on length of shaft and how hot the USG allows any part of the club to be, is going to be roughly 1.5, 50% more of your club speed to gets to ball speed. So 111 should be closer to 165, Got it. right? And a numerical value that a lot of your viewers may know is smash factor, and that just puts a number on it. But we're just looking at ball speed. If we can get the ball speed up, we've done better. But technically, a 143 smash factor is low. Mm -hmm. That means didn't come out of the middle of the club face as much as we want. We're leaving some on the table there. Yep. We're idling a little bit. There. Oh yeah, big time. What if I put you at 162, 163? Maybe not perfect, 162, 163. It's like, oh Andy, it's only three, three or four miles an hour. Every mile an hour is about three yards though. Hey, hey. now we're talking. So we're talking if three or four, <laughs> three or four miles an hour, mm -hmm. 10 yards, 12 yeah. yards, uh -huh. that's, some, that's measurable. Yeah. So we had a lot of room for improvement. Mm -hmm. You're giving me excellent energy, 108 to 112 miles an hour of speed. Let's see if we can transmit that better to ball speed. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Let's see where we go. So Andy, what are you building him first here? So what I'm doing first, what I like to do, I like to build what is closest to what he's coming from. So if it's another brand, I'm going to look at what that what that is, knowing the different brands, having a little background seeing things I can sort of compare and contrast. This is easy for me. I'm coming from last year's TS3. I'm going to I'm going to go into this year's TSI3. He's got a 95. I've got a 9. What the engineers found out in the development of this driver is that the 9 is coming out of the same window as the 95. So all our clubs have lost the half degree. So the 9 is the is the old 95. The 10 is the old 105. Now, doesn't mean that's where we're going to end up. But I want to start off with something that's similar so we can see the differences. We can see the ball speed gains. We can see the transmission gains. Uh, I'm going to start from there, see where it leads us. i got to tell you something, man. Aesthetically, it's a sexy looking club. It's all blacked out like this. Let's see. Wow. It just feels good at impact. It's, 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 it's such a difference. It's crazy. All right, so while Mike works his way through a couple of initial swings there, one big thing that stands out for me, and, and one thing you guys might be wondering is, what's the I? What's the I stand for? Well, they told us it stands for a lot of things, but the big one is impact. They really focused on impact and even sound design. I tell you what, it sounds so much different. Again, talking about the differences between the, the TS, previous TS drivers, um, from you know the last iteration to this, it makes it seem even more so from a user standpoint of it not being small tweaks, of it being a full redesign. And when you look at the two next to each other, you really see there are some dramatic differences there in the overall design of the head. So it's not surprising that you're gonna get some real differences, but a big one again, sound uh, impact, the feel and impact, but that sound impact is so different and it's got such a great sound. Danny, let's talk numbers, what do we got? All right. So what did we talk about? We talked about ball speed, right? Yes. That's what we wanna start with. Before we start worrying about the spin, the launch angle, which we're, we already saw, we can see without looking at track, man, we, we got some good ones there. Okay. Let's look at one of your, your good ones. We saw a 150 ball speed. You saw a 152 ball speed. You ready for ready for I'm some ready. fun stuff? Drum roll. 167. 167 <laughs> ball speed. 162 ball speed. 161 ball speed. I'm sorry I picked the best one first. Yeah, that's okay. The worst one was 157. Mm -hmm. Your best was 153.8. 
Your worst in five shots okay. was 157. Your best was 167. And that translated to what That's your transmission. 299 total. I mean, spin rate 20. Yeah, and we, and we have not idealized our launch and spin rate yet. However, having said that, the spin has come down. 13.4 launch, 2800 RPM of spin, 161 ball speed, 271 carry. Remember what we saw for carry before? Yeah. 230, yeah, yeah, right? We didn't, you know, wasn't there. 289 total. But carry is the number we want to talk about. And when we go from your best, your club, 232. To your best, 274 so carry. It's crazy. We're not supposed it's to see 40 yards. 40. <laughs> <laughs> we're not supposed to see 40 yards, but hey, we did. We love it. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I knew we were going to see an improvement, and that's with a similar shaft. We can go one of two ways now. We, yeah. we can start optimizing based around this because we got a good thing, or we can go right away and try your shaft in here so we can take any variable out and Let's go head to head. That. I like that yeah. too. All right, so we're going to swap out the featured shaft with the uh, Bumblebee. What we call it, Old Faithful? There you go. We're familiar with it. So. Old Yeller. Old Yeller. That's their business. What do you think of that sound? It's pretty. Yeah. You know, it's. I mean, there's no. It's not an ugly sound. Right. It's not you that know. ping or anything like no that. No ping, ting. No one's gonna be staring at you over here as you're hitting balls. It's pretty quiet. I like it. Yeah. We'll carry it. Thirty-one. Uh, you just feel it. We're not. We're not looking for launch. Yeah. It's that one felt good. All right, guys, and another big change that you're obviously going to see, you're going to see those little letters on that face, which also the face looks largely different than the previous TS drivers, is that ATI. And what that is, it's a 425 titanium. But the most important takeaway here is that that titanium, not only is it it's USA made, it's made right in Pittsburgh, but it's the first time Titleist has ever used it in the face. And it's something that the durability on this particular titanium is so high it lets them get that real thin face, which is gonna produce that better launch. And they're able to do it because they know it's so durable, they can get super thin. So if you're wondering what that little ATI there stands for, that's it. And trust me, you don't need to know all the science behind it. You can see it and you can feel it. Like you talk about impact, that's one of those big spots and that's where you're seeing. Mike is getting huge gains, a little bit better on the, um, the overall club speed, again, we talked about the aerodynamics changes that they made, but again, that face is able to give him a little bit more of that ball speed. So he's taking almost the same swing speed and translating it to more ball speed, and that's one of the big reasons why. Four shots you just hit with the new head, with your shaft, and our ball speed's in that same zone ahead of where you were, 162 ball speed. 163 ball speed, 164 ball speed. To remind you where you were, 150 ball speed, 152 ball speed, 154 Again, ball so speed. Again, so this is the engine. With your shaft. Yeah. That's why I'm calling it a transmission, not an engine. Right. I changed the engine on you, right. I got better speed. Yeah. All right, Andy, so we're gonna jump into the two now. Yeah, just so we can compare and contrast. So we, we wanna have the, the player have the experience of hitting both. I want to get the feedback of look and feel. I can't tell what the player f likes to look at, what they like to feel. So we want to make sure we give them the opportunity to try both. And we're going to try the TSI-2 now. A little different shape, a little different control. All right, we're doing the, uh, the TSI-2, 10 degree loft. So we're going to start the process over again just with the two. Featured shaft, then we're going to try it with the Bumblebee after. And this guy is what you're seeing. You know, if you watched our videos before, you're very familiar and used to hearing us saying this, but if you're new to it, the importance of the fitting. Because it's, it's easy to try to categorize the different clubs with generalities, but the reality is they just do perform so differently for different golfers, because we're all different. We're built different, we swing the club different. Again, due diligence. You never know what you might miss. So instead of generalizing, try, test. That's key. We already know we saw a great improvement going three to three. Yes. But we tried the two. In this particular case, didn't work out. Mike yep. had a hard time squaring that face. Everything was left high and right. Yep. No problem. We so don't we, adjust this. We will go back to where we already know we were in great shape with. Now we start tweaking that sucker. That's what I say. Now we know that three is the one. Three is the one. We've, we're going to now optimize the three that we've got close. We're going to make the scientists, the engineers. We're going to do little tweaks. <laughs> Everything's getting changed. <laughs>
We're going to start trying some position to see if we can straighten your ball flight out a little bit. Okay. And we're going to start looking about, we're going to talk about this weight back here and what it does uh, and how it can help a higher handicapper versus a tour player, low handicap guy. It actually does two different things even though it's the same process here. Let's start with the sure fit hosel first. Let's see if we can get your, your face just a little square and get rid of that slight little fade to the right. Unless that's a ball flight you want to see all the time. I don't. See, yeah, we want to see a straight yeah. ball flight. Yeah, right? we do. Yeah. yeah. So let's see if we can get I feel that. Like I'm going. losing distance with that fade, you know. With the title of Surefit Hosel, we have the ability to do two things. If we look at the head, I can affect the loft, and I can affect the lie angle. So if I'm fading the ball off to the right a little bit, I want to bring that lie angle up a little bit. So I'm going to bring the toe up in the air one position just to see if that helps with our with our ball flight. So we were doing everything at A1, which is our neutral setting. We're going to go to B2, and we'll bring that toe up just a little bit. Notice that the weight in the back is still centered. We're going to leave that for now. We're going to have Mikey just a couple balls. We don't need Rock Mikey. Okay. Yeah. What this track can do, we can do it to really affect two things. If I use the neutral position, I can also change that weight. If I need it to be heavier or lighter, I can change that. I can take the weight out and put a heavier or lighter weight in, just like your cartridge. Yep. If I put it all the way in the heel or all the way in the toe, it's the exact same thing as last year's cartridge in the heel or toe bias. Right. But now I've got those two in between positions. I'm going to look at the ball strike pattern. And we've got a few different things here. But if, if we looked over time, over a 10, 20 shot pattern, if we started to see good ball flight, we've set the sure fit hosel setting where we want it, we're getting good ball flight, everything else is equal. If I start seeing impact positions that are slightly towards the toe, slightly towards the heel, I can take this weight and put it in one of those in-between positions. It's not going to affect face angle. It's not going to affect anything but putting a little mass behind the ball. Got it. Like getting the hammer effect mm -hmm. of a little more mass right behind the meat, right behind where we're hitting it more often. Mm -hmm. In this case, in this snapshot I'm seeing with your swing, Mike, I'm going to actually go to one of those extreme settings. I'm okay. going to see if I can help you along with the Surefit Hosel setting, I'm going to see if I can help you get that face just a little more square, more consistently. And so will that, I instantly see less fade? Correct. Okay. That's what we're trying. That's what we're, that's what we're attempting to do. So we're going to use it as if it was one of your, your old driver here. We're going to go all the way in. Adjustability easy. Yeah, real easy. A couple spins and we're back ready to play. We're in that area. That yeah, is like just so that. much better. Our smash is so much higher. We're getting more ball speed from my same fuel source. Yeah, that's my engine, Mike, mm -hmm. is doing great here, swinging away, and we've given him so much more ball speed. And with a few tweaks, tweaks of the yeah. surefit hosel, putting a little weight inside for him to help get that that face square. We're getting some straighter shots. Out on the left side, left side of the fairway. Left side. You're not living on the left yeah, side of the fairway. <laughs> we know that. I don't even know Mike and I know that. <laughs> Here's one right down the center. Yeah. 109 club speed, 161 ball speed, 271, 289. Yeah. Beautiful. How cool is that? It's great, man. That's where we say we're doing well. I'm foolish not to upgrade to the CSI. I think uh, we think we're, we're in good shape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I can't have you be the only one getting all those yards. I know. Because I know. then you're going to beat me. Dude, you got to try. It. Okay. You got to try. It. I'm telling you. <laughs> Let's go. White to blue. So, one big thing for me. Yeah. I went with the TS2. Yes. Air on the side of forgiveness. For me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm a little bit all over the face with my driver. The main reason why I love the TS2 is because it allowed me to get a little more aggressive. Sure. I got more yards because I was less worried about where it was going to be. That's this sounds is great. like okay? super forgiving for me. Awesome. Yeah. And that's that's sort of what we're looking at in the TSI three versus two. Same idea. But again, same thing we did with Mike. We're going to go through the process and hit both. Right. Just so you. Let the numbers lead where right. they go. Let the ball flight tell us. Let the performance of the club tell us where we're going. We got some shots here. Let's see speed first. Let's see what your engine is giving me. Yeah, this is pretty. 97, 98, 95. Pretty standard of what I'm used to right there. 98, 96.7, 135 ball speed, 140 ball speed, 141 ball speed, 145, 146. 146 was absolutely the best we could get out of that. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. So the transfer rate was on that one shot. Here's one where we actually got exactly in the middle of yeah. the club face. Oh, Fantastic transfer. You might want to see this. So we did hit one that was just perfect. When we find that center, yeah. hey, that, that club is still good. Really, really solid, really far. And that's been my experience on the course. Right. I'll have a couple, I'll find the center, great drive. Right. Other times, I know I mishit it, but I've got that forgiveness that if I'm off the fairway, it's not usually by a tremendous amount. Correct, and that's what we want to keep. Right. So we're going to retain that. So we'll start with the two, but just like we do with the mic, we're going to filter in the other one just to make sure that something better isn't sleeping behind the corner. For here, sure, right? yeah. So here's two, two 227, 237. Good Gosh. start. Yeah, good, good start. start. Let's see. I don't know if we're going to be able to get 40 yards like we got from Mike here, but we're going to we're going to do our darndest. All right, let's see what we got. And like I said, look, if it, if anything shows me, I, this has been the best driver I've ever owned. Yeah. So if it's an improvement over that, then right, you know, it's like oh, it's a huge win. All right. Make take take the best, make it better. That's pretty much the formula. But look at the toe. Look how different the toe looks. For sure. This is one thing that we brought from our tour players. They want that toe rounded over a little bit more. Yeah, I can see you that. You can see that. Now, so even if I'm able to put this into a setting that maybe reduces your fade, gets you going a little straighter, it's still going to sit and look like it's sitting nice and square. Even if yeah. I've got that sure fit hosel setting helping you a little bit. That's, that's from our tour department. Same thing, we didn't talk about with that with the three. It's even more noticeable on the three where we really rounded that toe over. So no matter where you have it set, the better player doesn't want to see that club sitting closed. It's sitting open or technically square, but it has that open look to it. Yeah. Let's you release the club, go after it, no fear of going left. Gives you more confidence yeah. looking at it. Yeah. All right, Frank, TSI two and the feature check. Yeah. <laughs> right away, right Really, away. really trying to get some yardage. Yeah. Right. Sounds like some more speed. <laughs> From here, I can feel it. You hear the whoosh? I hear the whoosh. Yeah, I like that sound on the yeah, face. Right? <laughs> the only way we track it was rain. So a lot of familiarity for me. Right. But also, again, the differences. It sounds a little bit different. It, it feels a little bit faster. Okay. Not dramatic. Right. But I do feel a little bit more cutting through the air. So here's three of the last four shots. We're in your same pattern, uh -huh. right? We didn't. We haven't seen a dramatic improvement yet. But what kind of happened was, with the same engine, with that same energy that you gave me, I saw the same results but at a lower launch angle. Yeah. So one of the things, we're going through that fitting process, you started with a 9.5 TS2 head. Right. So I gave you what is the equivalent 9 degree mm -hmm. TSI2. And we actually, for you, and this is why we don't live on paper, we live in the real world here, we've solved too low of a launch angle. Mm -hmm. And even with that low launch angle, I was getting the same numbers. Right. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna try to go to the 10. You immediately see some low hanging exactly. fruit there, yeah. Exactly, I'm like, I got something for you. Yeah. Ten. You can start looking at shafts. There may be a better shaft for you. There it is. I like that flight a lot. I'm gonna cycle in some different shafts now. So I'm not okay. sure that's the best shaft for you. This is now just a little bit lighter. Still stock stiff. See how you respond to it. Good or bad. I love the sound. I love right. the sound. Here's, here's something to note. No. You can look at ball flight. You don't have to have a track man to see something. Right. You can sort of see the window it comes out of. If we look at that angle and we see a ball that spins, if we want to kind of know what the spin rate is, if it climbs on you, yeah. if it starts at one angle and goes up, we're spinning too much. We saw a couple of those with with the combination <laughs> with the shaft that yeah. we were used to. We were center, we were center hitting it, but we were kind of seeing it climb on one or two shots. Not all of them, a couple of them. I noticed that. That's why I kind of wanted to go to a different shaft. Yeah. That last shot you just hit started nice and high, even though it was the nine degree, not the 10 degree head. Right. It never climbed. Yeah. It rounded over. It sort of had an apex at its, at its height, kind of just drifted down range a little bit before falling it in shallow. Without looking at numbers, we can come back and say. And that's where we get the better rollout, right? Versus if we've correct. got that spin that's bringing it up, Right. It's going to stop it. Now this is, you know, Trackman's giving us a calculated rollout based yeah, on the spin. We dropped a lot of spin there, yeah. right? So 
it didn't it didn't sell the club to me yet. It didn't say that's a perfect fit, but it's certain something to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. That shaft might work really well on a 10 now. Get that yeah. launch up a little bit, and right. get that spin back around 2,000, 2,200. We got something going. Here. Yeah. This is where the art of the fitting comes in. We have to see what happens and sort of then, okay, I got to backtrack. Wait, that shouldn't have happened and it did. Let's go somewhere else. Let's try something else. All right, so now we're just going to take a look at that last shot compared to our pattern. We made some slight improvements, but we were seeing some similar things. But when we switch shafts, and then we switch the head to get that launch up, that, that one way on top of the screen, yeah, that's, the one that's, we that's like. the different one, right? Yeah, What's different about this picture? Right. Same engine, same yep. speed, great ball speed. We saw some good ball speeds on the occasional shot with yours. We come down here at 149, we kind of knew that. Yes. When we see a 100 mile an hour ball speed, we don't need smash factor. We can just sort of do the math yeah. pretty quick in our head, yeah. right? That's an easy one to divide. Yeah. We're pretty yeah. good there. Launch angle, 13.6. Spin, 2,700. Yeah. Look what the carry did. Yeah. Look at that carry. Jumped up. Let's just pick any one of these red dots in the middle. Here's a blue one in the middle. 217, 219. 227. I'm, I'm going up now uh, more than average. Here's, yeah. here's our best one before that combination. 236. Our best one. And that's even with the TSI 2, not the TS2. Mm -hmm. So we changed that out of the TS2. Your best one with your driver, your old driver, 237. One out of five. And the other four weren't close. Yeah. Now, we didn't create a new engine. We didn't no, have a new same, fuel same source, right? Speed. Same guy. Yeah. Everything kind of got optimized in one shot. Shows us our potential. We're still going to have you hit more than one shot. We don't buy a club off of one shot. We don't throw one out right. because of one bad shot. But that's a good data point to start. Hey, we have the potential to hit 250 in the air. And the total went up because, as you said, the way the apex in. Because we didn't have bad spin. Right. We didn't get that height. Where's that peak height? Height is 100 feet. We yeah. didn't get to 100 feet at a low launch high spin that's going to fall out of the air and land and not run. Right. We got to that 100 feet in the air with good launch and decent spin. That means the landing angle wasn't super steep. It wasn't going to dig in because it had so much backspin. It was going to hit and roll. West Texas, that ball's going a long, long way, way, right? Yeah, yeah. She's still rolling. You know? Right? She's still going down the parking <laughs> yeah, lot. Yeah. But 250 carry from our best of 237. Mm -hmm. We got 13 yards off our again. best. Yeah. All right, so came in with a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Both of us love the TS2 for me, TS3 for you. We said we want to see what we can do and get a little more. Ooh. And uh, Andy, you lived up to the challenge here. Yeah, I think we did pretty well. I, I think, think we, we, got, did pretty we got three smiles on our faces. Yes, I'm happy because I made two guys really happy here. That's yeah, right. Sure so did. Let's talk about it real quick. TSI, what did you find for both of us? All right, we'll start with Mike. Sure. We had. We had a, a club that you love with our bumblebee shaft. Yep, We're coming yep. in with the, with the old yeller there. Old yeller. Old yeller. Right? <laughs> so we were seeing 235. Maybe we weren't hitting our best shots, but we, we worked on it. We had let you hit a number of shots, and our best was 235 carry, running out like crazy. Yes. Yeah. But 235. Mm -hmm. We had a ridiculously good experience for you. Yeah. We put you in the hazardous smoke black, the RDX, the brand new shaft. Which a is little bit sleek. lighter. Yeah. A little lighter, mm -hmm. and we found a much better option. We gained ball speed. We gained carry by 40 yards. Mm -hmm. That is not two, a typo. That, no, <laughs> 40, I didn't speak. 40, 40 yards yard. of carry, and still coming in at a good landing angle, running out to the 290s. Fantastic, and it was guy. consistent. No words. Yeah. They'll, they'll show you the numbers. We took pictures. It's yeah. it's proof. It's there. There's right. there. We saw it. Now, Frank, we went a little a little differently for you. Mm -hmm. We're coming from the TS2. Right. We went into the TSI2 to start. Mm -hmm. We put the exact same shaft you were in. You're playing the hazardous smoke. Yes. We put the exact same weight, exact same uh, flex. So we're at 40, 45 inch, 60 gram, 6.0 flex. Put the same thing in. We didn't end up there, did we? No, we did not. All right. It was interesting. So yeah. we, we got some good numbers. We saw a 233, 234 starting point. Saw a great smash factor. So that means your efficiency was fantastic with your driver. Yeah. What happened when we went to TSI 2 is that it pushed it out just a little bit, but not enough. So we actually were looking at it and going, oh, let's try the three. Yeah, we tried the three. We tried yep. the three, and you sort of had the opposite reaction. It didn't work for you at right. all. We couldn't square that up, so you both went to the opposite one and couldn't square it. Right. Interesting. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Right? right. They did different things for different people. Yeah. Then I saw something. I'm like, you know what? We're we're getting decent launch, but the spin wasn't right. And I just had a hunch. I'm going to try in a different shaft. So we went to a ten side blue, 
tiny bit lighter weight, couple grams, three, four grams, but it's a different bend profile all of a sudden. First swing, you'll notice first we stopped. Swing. We stopped and I said, you gotta look yeah. at this yeah. first on one swing. Mm -hmm. Boom, 250. Yeah. Carry mm -hmm. with great spin. Our spin came under 3,000, which means the ball's hitting and rolling. Yeah. So we went from 235 only, some of them only went 238 total because they were spinning so much there yeah. was no roll. Yeah. yeah. When we dialed it back in for the 10 head, we tried the nine, which should have been the equivalent of your nine five, but we went up and loft a little bit, changed the shaft, got our launch up in that 13, 14 degree window, our spin in that high 2000s, and boom, four mm -hmm. shots, you'll see it, four shots were all carrying 250, yes. so a 249, a 251, a 252, rolling out into the 270s. Yeah. That's a big difference. And for me, I love looking at that dispersion at the end, coming yeah. in nice and tight, Those and it's like you said, we've got, the advantage of all the tech in the world here with the trackman but sometimes as you said it doesn't take much more than your eye correct yeah. we could see it we could see that ball flight just kind of leveling out and having that nice curve that we want rather than the no spinning up right again you can see it if you, you see, a, see it come off at one angle and it increases that's no good right we want to get our max height because we got it there efficiently because when it comes down it's going to hit and roll yeah. and i love that takeaway because if, if you're out there and you're hitting them and you don't have a trackman look at that ball flight and try to pick up on those same type of cues because you're, you're going to find out about your rollout. Absolutely. And that's that total distance you want. Absolutely. All right, Andy, we appreciate your Man, time today. You guys, We're you both guys, super that so psyched. Much, that was so much fun. I'd love to see the improvements on both. Yeah, yeah super psyched Can't to get wait. these out there and start Great playing job. with them. Thanks, guys. Thank you. 40 more yards. 40 more yards. <laughs> and you guys didn't think we were going to let you go just yet without telling you about the giveaway? Of course. Right? Of course. So, guys, First things first, I want you to drop a comment. Let us know what you think. What were your, this is our initial first impressions. This is our first time hitting the club. I want to know, as a viewer, what were your first impressions looking at the TSI 2 and the TSI 3? Let us know. Then click that link in the video description. You're going to see how to enter for free. And uh, we are going to randomly select one lucky winner. Oh, yeah. And it'll be your choice. So educate yourself a little bit because when we call on you <laughs> and we say, you're our winner. Yep. You tell us which one you want. Yeah, all right? that's so cool. Yeah, so cool. And if you guys get the opportunity to get into a fitting, whether it be a Titleist Thursday uh, or one of the Titleist Regional Fitting Centers, there's a great one in Sleepy mm -hmm. Hollow. You've seen us work with Kevin Sprecher. Yep. Get out there and fit because if there's one thing that we learn every time we do this, not only impressed with the equipment, but the importance of the fitting. Oh, 100%. I mean, the guys, you didn't, you didn't miss those numbers. The numbers don't lie. It's a no brainer. Get fitted. And what you see, the numbers <laughs> kept getting a little better and a little better. At as we went through the fitting process, right. the tweaks. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know we did. I can't wait to game these new clubs. I know. Oh, I know. I man, know. it just keeps getting. And I, <laughs> I am honestly truly shocked because I said I was so in love with the TS2. If they could beat it, right. And you know what? As you said, it's there. Yeah. It's right in front of you. It's right in front of you. Can't beat it. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>